Believe it or not, us vertebrates were once the underdogs, and this is how we started our takeover. The Ordovician. Now this was the second major post-Cambrian period in Earth's history, and it's where things really, really started to pick up for us vertebrates. 485.4 million years ago, the Cambrian came to a close and the world entered a period much like the previous one at first, with warm seas full of life. Two major things happened with that life though that would change the atmosphere on Earth forever. But how is this even recognised? You see, the Ordovician wasn't actually formally recognised as its own period until the 1960s, whereas before this, the rocks that were found there were placed in either Cambrian or Silurian. But before we look into these changes and how those changes affected the Earth, it wasn't actually the vertebrates at first. Let's put it all into context. Like I said before, things were much the same at the start as they were back in the Cambrian. Carbon dioxide was very high in the atmosphere, making the annual mean temperatures a lot warmer than they had been. The continents were still formed as Siberia, Laurentia, Baltica and the giant supercontinent of Gondwana. On this land, not much was going on in terms of life quite yet, so it would have looked something like... Rocks... Rocks... And... And, and more rocks. Speaking of which, plate tectonics had shifted up a gear again, making many erogenous areas. That's that's orogenous, as in mountain building. Not that's with an O, not with an E. Like, never mind. So much moving and colliding caused much of the Earth's surface to wrinkle like bunched-up bed sheets, creating these mountain ranges around the globe. There was also a proposed period of meteor showers. Now whilst the planet was an exceedingly hot and temperate place, things had cooled down by the mid Ordovician, which happens to coincide with something very, very important. The very first land plants. Small, non-vascular plants began inhabiting the shorelines, starting the process of producing life-sustaining oxygen in the air for millennia to come. This influx of oxygen likely contributed to the lowering temperatures that would lead to the Ordovician Ice Age, but I'll get into that soon enough. You see, the plants weren't the only ones making strides. Fauna was also going through yet another explosion, known as the Great Ordovician Biodiversification Event, or GOPE. Life overall in the animal kingdom increased by four times, with an increase in filter feeding organisms and arthropods being taken over by cephalopods with the new big bad apex predators being the likes of Endocarus, which trumped Anomalocarus at just under 10 feet long. Articulate brachiopods had also begun to take over from the trilobites in many shelf communities, which illustrates well the possible cause of the gobe. You see, the continents at the time had positioned themselves closer to the equator, pushing themselves up and creating warm, shallow seas, which life loves. Now this wasn't to say that arthropods just fell to the wayside. In fact, trilobites continued to thrive and new groups of arthropods began developing the tools that they would need to eventually crawl onto land by the end of the Ordovician. These included the Eurypterids or sea scorpions. We also see here the first rugose corals and sea stars. One group was sat timidly at the side of the life disco, watching all the other kids dance, but it would soon gain confidence. The weirdos that had encased a rod of nerves inside of an internal flexible skeleton then decided that they weren't quite happy with their floppy eating holes and decided to put bones in those too, birthing the very first jawed fish. Now jaws were a big deal since for the first time vertebrates actually had the tools to start eating more complex foods which meant they could also start predating. Both them and their jawless counterparts were now making themselves known and were challenging those invertebrates that thought they were so smart. Don't worry, I won't spoil who won. So now we have invertebrates that have diversified even more. We have plants on land and also vertebrates that have established themselves as the new kids on the block. What could go wrong? 
I'll tell you what, Earth would now see its first major extinction event. The Ordovician extinction event was not only the very first major extinction event, but also the second worst in all of Earth's history, seeing off around 80% of all life, more than what was killed off when the non-avian dinosaurs died out. So what the hell caused such devastation? Well, this event actually happened in two pulses. Remember what I said about the Earth cooling down? Well, things hit a crescendo when massive amounts of volcanism were shooting huge amounts of sulphur into the Earth's atmosphere, reflecting a lot of the sun's heat, and when combined with the effect that land plants were having, the Ordovician saw its next ice age. Now, just as sea levels rise with global warming, they also get lower with global cooling. Now, given how many species called shallow seas their home, this didn't look good for them. And then combined with the fact that they couldn't adapt very well to the much colder waters, they were pretty screwed. This pulse then started a vicious cycle. The ice age had only lasted up to 1.5 million years, and as it receded, anoxia in the ocean increased. Anoxia is essentially low levels of, or a complete absence of oxygen. Now the forms of life that dominated were completely dependent on oxygen, even in the water. And when things started dying off, the decay that happens produces even more oxygen sapping chemicals, making the situation worse. 443.8 million years ago, the extinction event came to a close. Most taxa that had been around were miraculously still around, but their numbers and diversity had been reduced dramatically, and they limped on into the Silurian to lick their wounds clean to get ready for the next round. Now, if you did enjoy this video and felt you learned something new, feel free to leave a like, and please consider subscribing as it would help me out massively and mean a hell of a lot. Until next time.